<laughs> All right, so it never fails. Every time I make a video about constitutional silver possibly being used in a barter situation, I get the same comments. So let's go ahead and dispel some of these myths about constitutional silver and barter. Silver Joker here. Okay, so before we get started, let me just go ahead and tell you that I do not expect a shift type situation to occur in my lifetime. Am I worried about the quote apocalypse? Not at all. Using my silver in a barter type situation is the least of my concern, the least of the things that I prepare for, but I do prepare for it. There may arise a situation where I need some of my physical silver for the things that I need. Now, that's a remote possibility, but it's still a possibility. So I prepare for them. As the Marine Corps has taught me to be prepared for anything and everything, but expect nothing. Now, keep in mind, all of that I'm going to share with you is my opinion. Now, that opinion is based on some of the research that I've done, but it's still my opinion. You will find people who will disagree with what I'm going to say today. That's fine. But I'm going to try to dispel in my way the three biggest myths I think people have surrounding physical silver being used in a barter type situation. Okay, so the first myth is really the easiest one to dispel. And that one is you can't eat physical silver in a shift type situation, so it would be useless. Well, I'll tell you this. <laughs> You can't eat bullets either, but I guarantee you I'll have a real good supply of that as well. <laughs> you know, obviously you can't eat physical silver. So if you're stacking physical silver, you're also preparing to have something to eat. So you're probably putting away things that you're going to need for sustenance, food, water, medical supplies, that kind of stuff. Silver is not the only thing stackers stack. We stack other things too. So that's the easiest one to dispel, but that one's been around forever. I get that on just about every video I make concerning 90% silver possibly being used in a part barter type situation is, you know, you can't eat it, why stack it? Which is kind of a ridiculous notion. The second myth makes a little more sense, but it's still something that I can explain. And that is people will not be interested in trading their food and supplies for hunks of metal. And you're absolutely right. Right after an emergency situation occurs and people do not have access to resources that they normally would, then of course they're going to hoard what they need. Food, water, medical supplies, those kind of things are not going to be up for barter. People are going to need those. So when we talk about using physical silver in a barter type situation, we're not talking about the immediate aftermath of a, an event. We're talking about later down the road when the people who are uh, left are the people who have prepared to survive such an event. Now, those people absolutely will be interested in barter, but it will be after things stabilize a little bit and there's a little bit more security around our lives and what we're doing. It's safe to co-mingle again with people immediately after an event like that, the last thing you want to do is approach other people in any way for uh, resources because they won't be interested in trading resources. They'll only be interested in gaining resources, namely your resources. So the best thing to do in that situation is to just stay away, prepare to be separate from society for however long it takes. So you're right. Nobody will be interested in that. But what we're talking about is later, later down the road when you start needing things, when your supplies start to dwindle and you need to interact with other people to get the things you need. That's when we're talking about using precious metals for barter. All right, the last myth is a little bit complicated. Nobody will trust physical silver because nobody will know what it is. You'll basically have to educate people in its 
in what it is in order for it to be useful in any meaningful way. Therefore, it won't be useful in any meaningful way. I'm going to disagree with that, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, barter, if it's going to be any kind of meaningful barter, and we're talking about this is way after the event has subsided and people are more comfortable being around each other again, you're going to need some type of standardized barter. And the only way I can explain that is through this example here. So, okay, so for example, let's say that I'm a metal forger. You know, I want my means of barter to be my metal work, my plows, shovels, tools, etc. Naturally, I got to determine a value slash price for my wares. And then I have to convince you, convince others of that price. I need some apples to feed my family. And you just happen to grow apples. <laughs> You need tools to help you harvest your apples. So we agree that 10 pounds of your apples is the price you're willing to pay for the tool that I made that you need. So now here comes someone else who also needs the same tool that I made for you. And we agree that that tool is worth 10 pounds of apples. Only now I have all the apples that I need, but I could use a goat. A goat is worth, obviously, more than 10 pounds of apple. So what's a goat worth? And what's 10 pounds of apples worth? Well, we obviously need something physical that's kind of neutral that we can agree has value. And precious metals works perfectly for this situation. And it's exactly why money was created in the first place. You know, not everyone lives where crops can be grown year round. You know, they're going to need something to barter with during the winter month. And people are going to need more than just what they have to barter with. Okay, so let's say that we base our unit of value on 10 pounds of apples. So we agree that 10 pounds of apples is worth an ounce of silver. And for argument's sake, we agree that $1 face value in junk silver is equal to one ounce of silver. Now, see, by doing that, it's easier to determine the value of things we need and the things we want to barter with and barter for. (laughs) So if we agree that a goat is worth 50 pounds of apples, you know, and I don't need, you know, apples right now, you can give me $1 face in junk silver, which is equal to 10 pounds of apples for the tool you need, you know, and when I trade or sell four more of those tools, I can get my goat. Now, look, I know that is a very simplified way to explain how, you know, one would use physical silver, namely junk silver in a barter situation. But there it is. And of course, there would be other things besides apples, goats and metal tools to value with silver. Now, I want to be clear. None of what I just described to you is new. I mean, this is the way trade has been done for thousands of years. And most of that trade, believe it or not, has been done using physical silver. So this idea of having to educate people on the value of precious metals as money, I believe is misplaced and not a valid argument. And the next part of that same myth is that no one will be able to determine the real silver from the counterfeit or fake silver. You know, first, let's keep in mind that physical silver has been or been used as money for thousands of years. You know, they didn't have sophisticated metal testing equipment for most of the time, and yet trade went on without much of a hitch. Also consider that there are lots of technical ways using sophisticated tools to counterfeit silver coins around today. And although there are fakes out there, it's still pretty safe to stack physical silver. You know, fakes are relatively rare. And the technology won't be accessible in a shift type environment. And let me tell you, I could teach even the most amateur silver user how to tell the basic difference between a silver coin and a clad coin. So no, physical silver will be very valuable for barter, I believe, if the situation ever arrives where it's needed for that purpose. Now listen, the chances are you'll be using your silver for what you want to use it for, to protect your financial health. I mean, that's what silver is going to be used for. That is the 
Three nines fine, your premium silver like the Eagles, Maple Leaves, and your 90% or junk silver. That's what it's going to be used for. But you want to be prepared for whatever because it doesn't have to be a global catastrophe. It doesn't have to be a zombie apocalypse. It could be any emergency where you need your physical silver to help you out of that bind. And so you get it for that. And you'll also have it for bigger things if they should arise. Now, do I believe that we're going to be using silver in a barter type situation? No, I do not believe that's going to happen, at least not in my lifetime. My silver is going to be used for what I'm stacking it for, my financial health. And But you want to be prepared. Dispelling these myths around physical silver. If you just think about uh, what physical silver could be used for, what you want to use it for, you'll see that a lot of the things that, a lot of the negative things people say about silver are just unfounded. They're just not true. Silver is what it is for you. That's what you have to determine. What it is for you. If Physical silver makes you feel more secure about your future and whatever preparations you've made to survive going forward, then that's what silver's for. Don't let somebody else try to determine silver's value for you. You determine that, and believe me, if you determine that for yourself, you'll have a whole lot more pleasant, positive time stacking it. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by. More good content coming up. I really like Constitutional Silver. I'm kind of on a roll about that. So you'll probably see another Constitutional Silver video in the very near future. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Let's just keep the silver chain rolling. Keep stacking. Peace.